Welcome to What the Dickens. I'm Sandy Toxvig. This is the Culture Show, where our panellists have to prove they know their arts from their elbow. Uh, with Tim Brooke Taylor tonight is a comedian who's well known for appearing in top comedy quiz shows. Well, let's make a nice change for you then. Uh, please welcome Stephen K. Amos. <laughs> Dave Gorman tonight is a poet and broadcaster who the Radio Times named as the 22nd most powerful person in radio. <laughs> powerful person in radio. Those are words that frankly don't go together. <laughs> like describing Gordon Brown as decisive. Uh, please welcome Ian McMillan. Our first round is called the name game. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question and you have to give me as many answers as you can think of. So Tim and Stephen, I'm going to start with you. Can you name the seven deadly sins as featured in the film Seven? I've done them all, I know that. Uh, you naughty boy, <laughs> I thought you were one of the goodies. Yes, I did. <laughs> Um, uh, is this the mendacity? No. Uh, I like mendacity. No, I think that's in fact a Puerto Rican band. But um, <laughs> greed uh, is very good. Is it uh, dopey, sleepy? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of. Well, do you know I'm going to give you sleepy for sleuth. So oh. see, uh, yes, I think that's. Okay. See how much I like them, boys. You've yes. got a lot. Reading, the, reading the Daily Mail, possibly. Yes, that's certainly, that's, uh, that's in there. Yeah, uh, we've got greed and sleuth so far. Envy, gluttony, uh, sexy... Oh, gluttony you've got, oh, yes. Oh, oh. What did you say? Envy? Envy is good. Yeah. Uh, what about any sexual ones that possible? Um... Sexual... Masturbation. <laughs> oh, can we say that? I, if it's on here, I can't read it. Um... <laughs> We've done four. We've got greed, gluttony, sloth, and envy. We're missing three. We know we? fifteen yes. of them. Fifteen, yes. darling. You've been busy. Yes. Yeah, but do you know what the missing three are? We... Lust. Lust, absolutely. Lust. Lust. <laughs> well, it's spelled with a U, isn't it? It's not spelled with an A. It's not last. It's no. not what cobblers use. It's a lust. It's lust. Do, do you know? Um, I, I, I met a, a, a very interesting woman from uh, from Lancashire. She was very. That sweet. can't be right. No. <laughs> <laughs> She was challenged in the brain of bar, mm -hmm. and um, and she said to me, Sunday, it is book, isn't it? A because a book is a dear. That's right. And I said, yes, that's right. I... <laughs> and also, when you go to their house, when you go to Lancashire people's houses, you can't get a cup of tea out of them. No. Because they go, do you not want a cup of tea? No, I don't know. Said, Have you not had one? Not yet. Do you not want one? I don't know. Will you not have a cup of tea? <laughs> Just ask me. I'll tell you. Have you not had one? Not yet. <laughs> Lust, as in lust. Paradise Lust. Paradise Lust. <laughs> Wasn't that by Morton? Morton wrote that. I think Morton. Morton? Yes. Paradise Lust by Morton. That was it. <laughs> she was from Bake Up. God, can you imagine if you were trying to ask her that in a library in Lancashire, you were, you're whispering as well. <laughs> Paradise Lust by Morton. So there's Lust, Avarice. Uh, no, it's Pride oh. and Wrath. Wrath. Are two Roth. missing ones. Uh, anyway, I, I think you did very well, Timothy, so I'm going to give you a couple of points because you did get four out of seven. Mm. Thank you. Uh, the seven deadly sins are lust, gluttony, wrath, greed, sloth, envy, and watching Deal or No Deal. <laughs> How is that a program? I don't understand. Uh, over to you, Dave and Ian. Can you name all 11 Madonna studio albums? Oh, um, a little bit like a virgin. Uh, yes. Uh, erotica? Uh, yes. In a recent interview, she said that I was the man from the north she'd most like to have sex with. <laughs> I don't mean no, to be no, harsh. That, that was Maradona. Oh, Maradona, yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> He's got great hands, though, great hands. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, he said no, of course. <laughs> the third time, yes. <laughs> there was probably an album called Madonna. Uh, there was, yes, um, interestingly. Madonna 2. Uh, no. Greatest. Like, a, like a Prayer, was that one? Like a Prayer, yes. Uh, any others? Anybody? Anybody? Madonna studio album. Studios. OK, supplementary question. Can anybody tell me the name of Madonna's 1993 erotic coffee table book? It's a bizarre oh, Sex. Sex. It was. Just I was course. banging my thing. Nothing happened. <laughs> You've already told me. <laughs> Thank goodness we've got a table in front of us. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, there are some people, Stephen, who treat this show like a therapy session, and I'm... <laughs> What does the K stand for? Are there many other Stephen Amoses that you needed to put the K in the middle? What is the K? It, it, well, it actually, actually, it stands for Kwa Benala Selele Omase Makaka Oyese. I can't think why you shortened it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just scans quite nicely, Stephen K. Amos. Stephen Amos sounds quite northern. A bit I don't Stephen Amos. What have you stolen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you did, you did get an extra point for that, uh, and you've got uh, two points for getting four out of the 11 albums. There's other ones, True Blue. There's one just called Music, which oh. I think... It should have been done under the Trades Description Act, really. That's <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, these days, Madonna is constantly reinventing herself, uh, rather like MRSA. <laughs> <laughs> Back well, to you. I actually wanted her to adopt me at one stage. Did you? <laughs> Imagine how cool that would be. I'd never work again. Uh, our next round is called Losing the Plot. Now, what you to do is name the book, film, song, or musical from the much reduced plot that I'm going to give you. It's a buzzing round, so fingers on your buzzers. Okay, the first one is a film. An old biddy can't drive. Her son, yes. Driving Miss Daisy. Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> Actually, uh, Stephen, you'll like this description. An old biddy can't drive. Her son gets her a bloke to drive her around. He's black, but they get on anyway. <laughs> Another film. Two out-of-work actors have a drink. They go on holiday, have a drink. They drink some more, and one of them gets a job. Yes. With Nail and I. With Nail and I, the entire yeah. plot. Um, Right, this one is a, we're getting a bit more highbrow now, this is a book. A wizard and his daughter live on an island. Actually, I don't think this counts as a book, I think. This is a big, yes. Oh, sorry, uh, you said uh, it first. Is it Tempest? It is The Tempest. I think calling it a book was a little bit confusing yes. there. Uh, it's a bit more of a play, really. Uh, a wizard and his daughter live on an island. They have ghosts. For, they have a ghost for friends. A duke and his mates get shipwrecked. The wizard messes with their minds. Turns out the wizard is the duke's brother. And if you've not seen it, honestly, that really does cover it. I don't think it's... <laughs> Aren't the, aren't the daughters both named after venereal diseases in that? Oh, they? Okay. Goneril and... Yes. Oh, and Candida or something. Yes, it? I mean, it really is. It's like, it's really <laughs> peculiarly... <laughs> he was ahead of his time, really. Yeah. <laughs> Showing our Shakespearean credentials there. I think the very first job I ever had, I was uh, advising, uh, after university, I was advising young girls in the GP's clinic about safe sex. A subject, uh, if you know me well, about which I know absolutely nothing. And, um... <laughs> And I was very anxious and very nervous. I didn't want to get it right. I'd been given all these leaflets. And I remember the very first young girl who came in, she was a young Irish girl, and I was very nervous and she was very anxious. And I said, are you uh, sexually active? It was quite a long pause. And she said, well, no, uh, mostly I just lie there. <laughs> <laughs> I know her. <laughs> uh, OK, this is a musical. Oh Boy meets girl on summer holidays. Boy... <laughs> summer holiday. Summer holiday, no. <laughs> Are you going to say that didn't work? Yes. Uh, Greece. Greece, oh, absolutely oh, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Boy meets girl on the summer holidays. Boy dumps girl. Boy goes joyriding. Girl goes gooey. Mm. I know her. <laughs> it all ends uh, happily ever after in quite bad clothing. Um, <laughs> When Greece opened on Broadway, Richard Gere was an understudy, but sadly for him, Olivia Newton-John never fell sick. <laughs> <laughs> we also featured Driving Miss Daisy, and by the end of the film, Miss Daisy and her chauffeur are best friends. And Jenkins, if you're watching, it's never going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Join us in a couple of minutes when our teams will be trying to make sense of our picture clues. Here is one for you at home. Can you find the book character hidden in this montage? Welcome back to What the Dickens. Before the break, I asked if you could find the book character hidden in our picture montage. Any luck? Go on. It's yes. Winston Smith from 1984. It is absolutely right. Winston Smith from 1984. <laughs> you just 
dystopian novel is famous for introducing such chilling concepts as Big Brother and the two minutes hate, although Channel 4 has recently extended both of those to 13 weeks. <laughs> Our next round is called Picture This. We've hidden famous names in picture montages, and I want you to find them. Now, they may seem easy at first, but I tell you, they do get a bit harder as we go along. So, as Tim and Stephen have a look here, this is a book. It's the title of a book. It's Evelyn War, is it? It yeah. is Evelyn War. Uh, um, grapes of War, no. No, no. Are they what not, are they? They're not grapes. Uh, peas? Peas. They're peas. They are peas. Is it a book? It's a book. Ah. Oh, War and Peas. War and Peas! We <laughs> 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 <You> knew it. <laughs> yes, War and Peas it was. Uh, War and Peas really <laughs> is an enormous book. A friend of mine just couldn't put it down, whereas I just couldn't pick it up. <laughs> In the original uh, Russian, War and Peace is called Vanya y Mir. Uh, it translates into French as La Guerre et la Paix and into American as Regime Change and Subsequent Chaos. <laughs> David Ian, another book for you. Oh, hello. We've got a lot of pictures. Oh, lot. Yes, as if it gets very complex now. OK. Um, kind of dog guide, is that? A guide dog. Guide dog. Alfred Hitchcock. Yes. yes. A galaxy. Uh, 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 yeah, very oh, good. Oh, we're yes. there, we're there. OK. And a thin man in a hat. OK. Watch an expert at work. Yes. yes. <laughs> Alfred's dog. Goes walking in space. Oh. <laughs> you give me the pieces, I'll put them all together. <laughs> I think it's, it's Hitchhiker's. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It is Hitchhiker's yes. Guide to the Galaxy, yes. absolutely right. <laughs> this hugely successful novel has sold millions of copies and famously features the answer to life, the universe and everything, which is 42. Uh, the question, of course, was how many sequels would the publishers really have liked? But there we are, it didn't happen. Uh, Tim and Stephen, a book character this time. Right, there's a 95-year-old lady. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what's wrong with her? Look at her. That like show. A yeah, kind of show. chipmunk implant. What is that? Apparently it gives you a lot to hold on to. When, you, when she's singing, <laughs> you just hold on to her cheeks and it stops. Really? Yeah. That looks frightening. <laughs> She's got a couple of gobstoppers up there. <laughs> so that's a lock or a key. Yes, a lock. Lock is good. Lock. Uh, and is that Coronation Sherlock, Street? Sherlock, uh, Sherlock Jones. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> absolutely right. <laughs> Very good. Sherlock Holmes was an eccentric character who often forgot to eat, was a heavy smoker, a cocaine addict, and a competent musician. Uh, all of which suggests that Pete Doherty might make a decent detective. <laughs> Dave and Ian, let's move on with the game. Uh, this is a film character. What have we got here? Uh, that's a ball of some sort. A ball? Ball yes. Snake Lake. That's it. It's the old film character, Ball yes. Snake Lake. Ball Snake Lake. <laughs> yes. uh, the mountains, where are these? Are these are, I can tell you, the mountains in North America. Rockies. Rockies. Rockies, Rockies Ball Boa. Rocky, Rocky Ball, 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 Ball. Ball. Very good. Yeah. In the first Rocky movie made in 1976, Sylvester Stallone famously runs up a set of steps in a hooded sweatshirt. And in the final movie, 30 years later, he goes up the same set of steps, uh, but this time in a stunner stairlift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next round is called Balance the Books. The questions have a financial feel, and to help you out, we're going to give you a choice, okay, of three answers. So, Tim and Stephen. Which of these musicals was the most expensive to produce? Starlight Express? <laughs> Lord of the Rings or <laughs> Wicked? Oh, right. It can't be Starlight Express because that's one with uh, the roller skates. Yeah, well, it cost a lot. Really. Yeah, it was quite a long time ago, too. Yeah, the 80s. Been, yes. We all had roller skates. <laughs> yes, we did. Well, you were a posh boy, you probably had a car. Yes, I had somebody that rode them for me, the roller skates. Oh, bless. Um, Lord of the Rings is recent flop, was it? Did it come off? And I think that must be very expensive. It has recently been cancelled. Wicked is the one about the, the witches, isn't it? The witches yeah. in... Is it the Witch of Eastwick? Uh, no, it's the one about uh, the Wizard of Oz. Is it? 